Good day, this is Jim Pytel from Columbia Gorge Community College, Renewable Energy Technology Program. This is Digital One. Today's discussion is going to be about decimal to binary conversion. If you're not getting the joke that's displayed up top here, you should probably go back and revisit the previous lecture, just binary numbers. Okay? So, decimal to binary conversion. We already talked about basically getting our binaries numbers and converting them back to decimal. So how do they get in binary in the first place? So there's two main methods. The first one is the sum of weights method. And this is kind of what I like to refer to as the table or memory method. And the second method is our repeated division by two, which is an algorithm. An algorithm is just a repeated set of steps that are just done over and over and over again. And that's exactly what a computer does, because it specializes in extremely boring tasks. So you can use one method, you can use both methods, just use the, use the method that works best for you. And for an exam time, I promise I'm not going to give you a number greater than a bazillion. So just be comfortable to do either one of these, sum of weights, repeated division by two. Okay, let's do the first one, sum of weights. So the way I like to think about this is what are our weights? 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. They're all powers of 2 in the binary system. 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, on and on. So if you're given a decimal number, just start at the largest, closest power, OK? And then go down from there. So for an example, Let's put um, let's put 17 in binary format. Well, start at the largest one and work your way down. So here's the largest one you remember. It's 512. How many 512s are there in 17? Well, there's none. How many 256s? We're going to work on our way down. Zero. Zero 128s. Zero 64s. There's zero 32s. OK, but now I've reached the number 16. And the number of interest was 17. So there is a 16 in 17. So get rid of 16 in there. There's one left over. It just so happens one is a power of 2. It's 2 to the 0. So we know that there's no 8s, 4s, 2s, 1s. Our number is. 1, 0, 0, 0, 1 in binary. And if we were to go ahead and put this in a byte format, where there is 8 bits, the correct answer would be 0001, 0001. Okay? That is 17 decimal in binary. Check our work. Again, 16, 1, 16 plus 1 is equal to 17. So this is a super convenient method. And let's just do another one. Um, 26. So it's point 26 in this. So you can shortcut all the, the mess there, because you know that there's no 512s, 256s, or anything of that like that in it. But there's a 16 in there. Whoops. Gives us 10 left over, so there's 116. And inside 10, how many? There's an 8 in there. Gives us two remainder, so that's 16, that's 8. There's no 4s in 2, but there is a 2 in 2. Gives us our 0. There's no 1s in 0. So our answer, and again, let's put it in 8 bit or byte format, triple zero one one zero one zero is twenty-six decimal. Okay? So that is our sum of weights table slash memory method. Okay, this is obviously convenient for smaller numbers or numbers within the human realm. Again, like I said, I'm not going to give you numbers greater than a bazillion on an exam. So what happens if someone presents you an incredibly large number? You wouldn't be able to do this unless you had all day and you had an incredible 
amount of memory yourself to remember all those powers of 2. So that's why you come up with repeated division by 2. And as the name implies, it's just division by 2. So it's um, best just to illustrate it with an example. So repeated division by 2. Let's take the number 55. So all you do, divide, as the name implies, 55 by 2. That's 27 with a remainder of 1. OK? That first one, that first answer there, the first remainder, excuse me, that is my LSB, which is my least significant bit, 1. And then we're going to move our way to the MSB. And I'll show you how to recognize when you've gotten to the MSB. All I take is that 27, divide that by 2. 2 goes into 27 13 times, with a remainder also of 1. I put that number here. Thirteen divided by two is six with a remainder of one. That goes there. Six divided by two, that goes in three times with a remainder of zero. Again, that goes right there. So we're working our way from LSB to MSB. Three divided by two, how many times does two go into three? It goes in one time with a remainder of one. So we're going to take that guy, put that here. And now I've got 1 divided by 2. I'm taking that, putting that this way. How many times does 2 go into 1? Well, it goes in 0 times. Remainder 1. Once you get a number here of 0, stop. Because you've reached the MSB. 1. OK? So if we've done everything correctly, our number 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1 should be equal to 55. And what I would recommend you do, check your work, OK? So how many ones? There's a 1 in there, a 2, a 4. There's no 8s. There's a 16 and a 32. So 32 plus 16 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1, 55. I did it correctly. The whole point of the repeated division by 2, you saw it, divide by 2. Take the remainder, put it there. Take the answer, put it down here. Repeat, divide by 2. Take the remainder, put it there. Take the answer, put it down there. It's a repetitive structure. It's an algorithm. This is how computers do it, especially with incredibly large numbers. This is how you can generate a binary number from decimal. Okay. Because again, machines excel in repetitive, boring tasks that you don't want to do. Okay, so those are two major methods. Um, let's just do another example of the repeated division by two, just to make sure you're tracking. Okay, let's start 39. And again, if you feel confident, go ahead and try this by yourself. And pause the tape, and we'll see if we get the same answer. Okay, what's my first step? 39, divide it by two. How many times does that go in there? It goes in 19 times with a remainder of 1. That's my LSB. Take my answer, put it down here. 19 divided by 2. How many times does that go in there? It goes 9 with a remainder of 1. 1. Answer, put it down here. 9 divided by 2. How many times that go in there? It goes 4, remainder 1. 4 divided by 2. Take that answer, put it down there. It goes in 2 times with a remainder of 0. 2 divided by 2. It goes in 1 time with a remainder of 0. Looks like we've got another 0 there. Starting to slant so I can fit it on the same screen. Take our answer, 1 divided by 2. It goes in 0 times, remainder 1. Remember, this 0 right here is critical. That means stop doing what you're doing because you've reached the MSB.
which is a 1. And if we've done this correctly, 1, 0, 0, triple 1 should be 39. Is that true? So 1, 2, and a 4. There's no 8s, there's no 16s, but there is a 32. 39. We have done it correctly. Okay? So, sum of weights, repeated division by 2. Those are the two main methods. But, because I'm a nice guy, I'm going to show you method 3. There's a third method here, which I'm going to call the secret cheating method, which you are not going to be allowed to do on the exam. The reason why is because I want you to be comfortable doing the sum of weights and or repeated division by 2 the hard way, because there is a third super easy cheat method. And that is called use your calculator. And the reason why I do method three is so you can practice method one and two and see if you're doing it correctly. Okay, so you can't use a calculator on this exam for digital one. Um, but I want you to get practice doing this. So if you're just hanging out at home, doing nothing one of these days, and you say, hey, I'm going to do some sum of weights and repeated division by two to go ahead and give myself some practice, because Jim really wants me to be an expert at this. Here's a way to check your work, OK? So I'm going to show you how to use this secret cheating method using the TI-89 titanium edition graphing calculator. So if you don't have this one, tough luck. Figure it out yourself, because it is the secret cheating method. So anyways, if I'm in decimal mode, which I certainly hope you are in your calculator, if I put in the number 15, and then I search through my catalog, I come up with this funny looking symbol that looks like an arrow with bin after it. That's a binary conversion. So I put in 15, I take my catalog, find my binary conversion, just press enter, what do I get? Chances are you get domain error. The reason why you're getting a domain error, because you're probably in approximate mode. Okay. Why are you getting the domain error? Well, chances are your TI-89 is using successive division by two. It's an algorithm method, and it requires you to be in an exact mode. Basically, you need that remainder. It's not going to uh, remember what does exact mode do. When you put in 15 divided by two, it gives you, as an answer, 15 divided by two, which is the exact answer. Okay, so you need to put it in exact mode. And what I recommend you do, especially if you're taking several other classes at the same time, I typically put my calculator in approximate, just leave it that way. Put it in exact mode, at least for this temporary, it's your choice. You do whatever you want to, but I always leave mine in approximate mode. If I'm doing binary conversion to check my work, I temporarily put it in exact mode. Now I put in 15, I look through my catalog, I press bin, and what does it do? It prints out 1, 1, 1, 1 with a 0B in front of it. 0B is not part of the number. It's just a means of telling you, hey, I'm in binary. It's almost equivalent of me writing this, you know, with a base 2 down here, OK? So that 0B is not part of the number. It's just telling you, hey, this is a binary answer, so you don't think it's 1,111, OK? So what is it? That's a 1, that's a 2, that's a 4, that's an 8. Add them all together, you get a 15, OK? So you could practice putting numbers in. Figure out, does your binary representation of it using the successive division by 2 or the sum of weights method does it actually really equal the correct answer? So check your answer that way. Now, same thing in reverse. Let's say I've got a binary number and I want to convert it to decimal. All you do, type 0B, which tells the TI-89 that the next number that you put in there is going to be binary. 1, 1, 1, 1. Press Enter. What does it do? 15. OK? Because if I just put in this 1, 1, 1, 1, 
the calculator says, yeah, 1,111. So what? By you telling it 0B, you're telling, OK, what I'm putting in there is a binary number. And I want you to convert it because you are in decimal mode. And everything you deal with is decimal. So put it in decimal mode. OK? So secret method number three is just use to check your work to confirm or deny that you are on track with the sum of weights or repeated division by two. OK? So now we are going to go into our binary arithmetic lecture, which I like to call the binary party tricks.